And this study talks about the importance of data and peace building, which is something that we talk about a lot. Um, and we can learn lessons from a psychological study in Siberia. So the first question is, what is the nature and level of conflict in the Altai region of Siberia? Um, and the follow-up questions or the methods are, um, the mass psychological survey was conducted under the project developing and pr promoting a set of social measures to reduce the level of social tensions in conflicts in this region. Um, a standardized interviewing process took place at people's homes, um, both in urban and rural populations, which is important because as we discussed, there are some cultural divides, at least in the United States and in other countries between rural populations and urban populations. Um, in both of these groups, over 1,220 respondents in four cities and six districts participated in this study. So a pretty good um, pool of people to pull data from. Um, and then going to the next part, the results were that 74.6% experienced conflict sometimes, whereas the percentage who experienced conflict constantly was 1.7, and only 6.4 had never experienced conflict. So it seems like pretty much everyone experiences conflict at some point. Um, it's just a matter of who's experiencing it all the time, which seems to be pretty low. Um, but also the group of people who have never experienced it also seems pretty low. So something to be explored there. 35.3 um, prefer to find a compromise, interestingly enough. 21.7 try to prove their case at all costs. 19.5 don't contradict the opponent at all. 12% do not pay attention to the opponent's actions and 3% resort to the help of other people. Um, I find it interesting that the first number and the last number are so low. Um, I find it interesting that only 3% would resort to the help of other people. And I find it interesting that 35.3%, only 35.3% prefer to find a compromise. Um, the population largely did not know um, utilizing a third party neutral was an option. Instead, they would turn to friends, relatives, the police, courts, media, strong powerful people, or write complaints, um, as opposed to using someone who's neutral to whatever conflict is going on. Um, and the key takeaways are basically that you can use data to design and implement better informed interventions. This survey saw that there are few people who had conflicts with another religious or regional community. Oftentimes these conflicts were instead with people they knew. So family members, colleagues, bosses, professional groups, employees should be trained on how to handle these disputes and these different personalities that may cause conflict, including those with power imbalances. So the main takeaway seems to be that conflicts are not, at least the ones that they were examining aren't with, um, random people, it tends to be people that you have some sort of relationship with, whether it's a positive relationship or a negative relationship, um, and that you can utilize data to try and see how you can mitigate the effects of those conflicts. Well, this, this, this definitely supports what we're trying to do for sure, right? It's yeah, I think, data for, yeah, yeah, entirely. I mean, it says utilizing a third party neutral, and that's like, yeah, yeah. very um, relevant to what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think this, I mean, I mean, this is obviously very specific to a particular culture, but right. uh, I think in general, a lot of people don't know that they can use a third party neutral. So that, that's, that's something that we're trying to fix. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'd be interested to just to compare it though, if the study were done here in the, in the U.S. or to just to compare and contrast the use of third-party neutrals and right. what, people, what people knew of that. Well, I think of like going to small claims court and like mediating, like if you're out there trying to say like, oh, you should try mediation, people are just like, what is that? Like, what are we, what are we, what are we talking about here? Um, and so I feel like I, I, I'd be interested in seeing that too, Sarah. I'd be, because um, I, I wonder how, how different it would be. But I feel like people generally don't know what mediation is or what, you know, what we do. Or if they do, it's, it's in the court context, like you just said. I mean, it's community right. dispute resolution centers have been pushed a lot, like in the court systems, at least in New York. I mean, I'm sure in other states too, but everybody thinks of it as a, you know, a, a court, a, okay, small claims court or... Yeah. We're not there yet type of thing, whereas we're looking at it more at the relationship level and especially in the workplace, right? Those are the people that you are with majority of your days. Mm -hmm. And so I like this key takeaway, noting that m majority of the conflicts occur with people that we know 
people that we are surrounded by majority of the time, i.e. in the workplace, your colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Your family members, yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of talk about intergroup conflict, but really the, the massive amount, most people that are just normal people living in their own lives and cultures are mostly dealing with people that they know and not uh, their group. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and looking at the results too, with the thirty-five point three, prefer to find a compromise. Twenty-one prove their their side. I think that's interesting too. Like just comparing it to what we do, where we really look at it as we what we don't have to compromise. We can transform the situation to where it's a win-win. And I'm, I mean, maybe if that were a an option in this survey majority of people would pick that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah, I mean, most, most people would, I think, would prefer, unless they're experiencing schaden, what's it called, schadenfreude? You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Schadenfreude? It's the, it's the pleasure taken from other people's misery. <laughs> oh. Like German, German <laughs> word or something. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, a lot of people, when they feel like they've been, you know, they've been wronged in some way, they want they want, they get, they want to feel pleasure from just someone else's, you know, downfall. But, uh, but I, but I think a lot of people just, you know, probably would prefer that everyone get their needs met and not other people feel miserable. I mean, I would think the majority yeah. of people feel like that. You know, yeah. and I mean, and that's what we oh, do, right? Yeah. That's why we look at uh, the con that's the difference between conflict transformation and conflict resolution. Right. Resolution can often bring compromise and transformation can often bring um, everyone getting their needs met. Yeah. That's something to add into that article. Right? I know. I know. We, we should, we should add in, no, we should add in outcomes to that article too. Like, like yeah. he uh, knows writing an article for the site, uh, conflict transformation versus resolution versus management. And, nice. then, you know, and we, so we can look at like, what are the different types of context that each would work in? or would be applied to and then what are the different potential outcomes what are the different potential methods for each yeah yeah definitely this is a timely very i'm glad that we had this study for for my help <laughs> yeah <laughs>